Welcome back to Classic Britain, and we are here at the Haynes Motor Museum. Now, this is pure luck. We weren't planning this. We realised it was en route, and we just decided to stop. And we couldn't have timed it better, because there appears to be some sort of car gathering here. So, we'll have to take a look around these cars. There's way more over there, and some more up there. And then we're going to take you around the museum. So, Triumph TR6 999. Who are you going to call? The police, apparently. We have another beautiful Triumph. I really do like these. I'm terrible to Triumph, so I do apologize. It's a TR... Three or four? I, I, I think it's a four, yeah. Ooh, a TR6. This is the injection one. Excellent. TR7. Ooh, and we have a very tasty Jaguar V12 E-Type. Obvious way to tell us the grill's different, but you've got the fan tail at the back. Oh. Enzo Ferrari, of course, famously said, most beautiful car in the world. I wouldn't go that far personally, but they are pretty stunning. My mother doesn't like them at all. She thinks the SD1's the best looking car ever made. <laughs> but it is a good looking car. She likes the Ferrari Daytona, but uh, it ripped off. MGB, this is exactly the spec that got me into classic cars. Identical to this. Same paint, same wheels. Yeah, this is where it started. We're going to take a walk around this one for nostalgia. I know it's not rare or anything, but... Yeah, this is exactly... Oh, this is identical. Even the same interior. Oh. Yeah, this is what he, this is what he had. Wow. He's a stag. Complete with Triumph V8. Oh, these are really good anti-theft devices, actually. They wrap around the entire steering wheel. They're actually quite good. Now, I'm, I apologise if... Um, say hello to Rob. Hi. <laughs> Rob's Retro Rides. Go check him out on YouTube. I think he's got, like, two videos, but still, he's my best mate. I've got to plug him. Um, ooh. It's, a, it's got the beautiful clover leaf alloys. Yeah, what is... Well, it, is, it, is it an Escort? It looks like an XR. Free-eye convertible to me. Yeah, I don't know anything about Ford, so you know. Oh, no, it's XR3. It's too old to have injection, but. Oh, oh. Um, fun fact about these cars, actually. Is this an MGF or a TF? It's an F. So. 1.8 K series. So, did you know that these are two Metro chassis welded together? I did. Did you know what the F stands for? No. So the F stands for to for F'd. And the TF, the later version, stands for totally effed. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, because... Uh... You can do a head gasket on that with the engine in situ. You have to be Superman across the back of the car. We had one of these at my automotive college, and it was... Yeah, I've never worked on one again. Oh, wow, this is Sunbeam Tiger. Yeah. It's a V8. That's a rare one. Nice. Yep, it's indeed a Tiger. Now, there's a trick with the bonnet open to tell if it's an original Tiger or not. It's something to do with the bulkhead or a small marking, but it gives away if it's a real one or not. But still very cool either way. Well, I suspect it is a real one. Genuine one, shall we say? Look at the S2000. That's a fantastic car. It's not classic, though, is it? No, it is a fantastic car, nonetheless. Really nice MGB. G-Reg, early one. Nice tunnel cover. That Mini just definitely, definitely does not look stock. I'm not going to lift the bonnet because it's not my car, but... Okay, that is turbocharged. <laughs> Pocket rocket. Wow. Ooh, Wolseley. These are actually very undervalued and really nice cars. That, I believe, is a Series 1 Land Rover. Is it a Series 1? It is, yeah. A Series 1 Land Rover. This is more your forte, Rob. You know what this is? No, not really. <laughs> no. Ooh, nice E-Type. I prefer the earlier ones, actually. But the problem is the early E-Types had flat floors and there's not a lot of room in them. Ooh, nice early Mini. D-Reg 66. Austin Cooper. Ooh, is it, a, is it a Cooper? Is it a Cooper S? No, it's not called Cooper S. I do think the, extent, the external door hinges look better, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And the sliding windows. It is an Austin Cooper. Wow. Uh, let's go have a peek, because that's more um, modern stuff. AMG. So oh, wow. A, C43 AMG. I believe it's a 443 engine. V8? Yeah. V8, wow. Very powerful. Very 4.2 in this Jag. Very nice. 
A fun fact about these is the uh, wiring harness is biodegradable by German law at the time. It's biodegradable so, uh, wiring harness? Yeah, so it tends to break after a, about 20 years. Ooh, that is a TVR. That is a TVR. That's a beautiful one. Uh, what, what's, oh god, I know what it's called. I have no idea. I'm sorry. Not my that is a good looking car though, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, I wonder if no A Russian is... billionaire bought TVR, you know? Yeah, I do wonder if Noble rips the designs off. Yeah, definitely. TVR. Also, this is for you, Anthony. I know you like TVRs. I believe this is called the Serbia. Is it Serbia? No, it's not, is it? Um. Oh, God. I, I can... I can't tell you. I'm sorry. No. Well, there's some more cars over here. We'll go have a look at those. Oh, it's Greece. It's Greece all over again. We have a Mustang. Uh, later Mustang. I think we saw that one earlier actually, or one identical to that. But I don't really care about that because that is a, is a Cadillac. I believe it's a 48 Cadillac. Definitely 1940s. Late 40s, early 50s. Oh, isn't that stunning? That is a beautiful car. Look at these wings and these fenders. Oh, it's got a metallic, is that metallic? No, it's not a metallic paint job. It's just the paint bubbling. <laughs> no disrespect to the owner of this car. Beautiful interior. Oh, look at that back end. Don't you think that's fantastic? They just do not make cars look like that anymore. Oh, that is awesome. Look at the back end of it. That is nice. So this is a Pontiac. I think it's a Chieftain. It, it is a Chieftain. It is, okay. So funny story, Rob was going to buy one of these in bits years ago it for... It's the Chieftain, it's a Star Chief. Mm. How much was the one you were going to buy at this time, Star Chief? It was in bits, totally in bits, a uh, thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. God, if only you couldn't buy one like that now. It was a rock box, if I'm fair. Yeah, but it's still worth a lot of money. God, this one's clean, isn't it? Look how nice this one is. Beautiful interior. Oh, I love the sun visor. That's proper cool, that. This is a Star Chief, I think. Is it, can you, can you remember? Was this it, or? I guess it was hard to tell, because yours was in bits. I'm pretty sure if that is a, is a Star Chief, it is. A you could have bought this thing. car for a thousand pounds. Well, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. We've got another stag, and we got another cheese, and a 2CV. Very nice. No. I, I, I'm i sorry, I despise 2CVs. They're my most hated classic car. I, I love them. I first. really dislike them. I think they're horrible to drive, and I have driven one. Slow, underpowered, noisy as hell, really dangerous. So if I bought one, would you be a passenger? No. Um, I wouldn't go in your village if you had it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's how much I dislike them. All right, that's enough. Let's go back to the main car park. I could not have timed this better. Literally turned up randomly, and there was some sort of do going on here out in the middle of nowhere. And I was right, that Mini is in fact very turbocharged. It's a 12... 1293. You can hear the boost. I did see intercooler pipes on it. Oh! That's angry. That's very angry. <laughs> beans, beans. <laughs> Whoa. What am I doing? I can go around here and get the proper leaving. Whoa, <laughs> this is gonna be spicy. This is going to be spicy. Oh, we have some stunning cars now. Here comes the 4.2 E-Type. Beautiful car. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. 4.2 power. Oh, that's a lovely base. Nice turbo sounds coming from the Porsche. Right, okay. So, I'm not going to film all the cars leaving, but I really wanted to get that Mini on camera because that was really interesting. But uh, anyway, so we're getting close to the museum. Look 
at the size of this mother. It is absolutely ginormous. I don't know if we're gonna have enough time today to cover everything, but we'll just rush around and do the best we can. This is what we've been doing nearly a thousand miles in for these videos, um, a little Toyota Starlet. Absolutely lovely car. Anyway, so this is one of my soft spots on British cars, a Frogo Sprite. I absolutely adore these little cars. I think they're brilliant fun. I'd love to build like a nice tuned 1293 or 1380 even and put in one of these and go like hell. Little MG Midget, very nice. We actually have, ooh, we have a Rover 827 coming. Some more cars leaving. There's an 827 Fastback. That's very, very nice. Nice. That is very tidy. I do love the look of an 827. Ooh, that is nice. SI. SI. Lovely. That chap is a big 827 man. Big newer Rover guy. Oh, that does sound nice. V6 action right there. And we have some more cars leaving. I literally handed him, shouted, I've got 10 P6s, he stopped the car. <laughs> and we added a 30 second chat. Oh, spicy. So hopefully, with a bit of luck, he'll get in touch and we can uh, do some things. He's got some really rare Rovers, actually. He's got a load of rare later stuff, 827s, Sterlings, all sorts of stuff. So good contact there. I really need to make business cards. That's the next thing I'm gonna do. They should probably say, hi, I'm a Rover Nutter. Here's my number. Something like that. I'm excited to hear this AMG because it does have a V8 in it, I believe. Ooh. Send it! Yes! V12 Jag. Ooh, that was a bit close. <laughs> that was wheel spin. Oh, that made my day. What an absolute legend. I am going to allow some modern stuff purely because V8 noises. It's definitely worth it. Oh, that is indeed a five litre. Oh, that's the burble we watch videos for. Whoa. Yeah. Send it. <laughs> oh, we got some TD action. Oh, that doesn't sound stock. That is not stock, is it? That was a big turbo wine. Oh, here's a lovely MGB. Hi. <laughs> Beautiful car, wire wheels. Very nice. Oh, here comes the Triumph Tiger. Beautiful car. That's a nice burble. We got the MG again. More sedate. Oh, nice Jaguar. Silent but deadly. Oh, nice V8 stag. Hey, hey, hey. MG, hopefully the guy doesn't find my joke offensive. Whoa. Here comes the Americans, and I'm not talking about this lovely Series 1 Land Rover. I'm talking about Grease Lightning behind and all these other cars. Beautiful Series 1 Land Rover, really nice actually. A Reg, yeah, early one. Lovely engine. Now that is beautiful. That is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> And we've got the Star Chief. I believe it's a Star Chief behind it. Lovely car. Is this a 48? What year is this? 41. 41. Oh, it's only seven years off. <laughs> 41. Beautiful. Lovely Pontiac. Stunning. Oh, we're hearing. It's the shouty Mustang. It's making lovely noises. It was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. Lovely stag. Got that V8 gurgle. Whoa, that's naughty. 
They have no right to sound that good. They really don't. <laughs> okay, this is the one I'm most excited about. Um, and you can make that a sexual way if you want. Um, this is the TVR and <laughs> that's a sound. Please send it, please send it, please send it. Go on. Yes! He did it! <laughs> Worth it! Back to enter the museum. First time see he he. Okay. I was not expecting that. A mirror. Holy cow. Holy mackerel. I've never seen one of these in the flesh before. God, that's jaw-droppingly gorgeous. The lines on that. Blooming heck. Oh, it's the S as well. Wow, top of the range. H Reg. 1969. Oh, I did not see the RS200. Oh, okay. That, that mm, okay. That's, um. Isn't this the rarest Ford on the planet? There they two hundred of them. There can't be two hundred surviving, though. Well, there was a hundred made, um, but they faked two hundred, I believe. So a hundred real ones. A hundred real ones, a hundred fake ones. I, th I think something along the lines of that. Believe it or not, I didn't realise until recently that it's only a one point eight in these. I didn't realise how big it was. Yeah. I thought it was smaller than that. I thought they'd have um, like the later V six, you know, the aluminium one. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that was around at that point in time. Oh yeah, it would have been 986. 150 miles per hour. 50,000 pounds when new, 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. That's so fast. For a car in the 80s, man. They rely on the bodies. Yeah, they did. Because they're fiberglass. Oh. Oh, your Recaro seats. Look at those, this crazy air scoop here. I won't go past the red line. There it is, there's the engine. Tucked away in there. It's not an engine, is it? It's hard to tell. No, it's not. I'm being stupid. Ignore that. Wow. Is the engine back here? Is it rear-engined? Yeah, it's rear-engined. It is rear Okay, yeah. I, I don't know a lot, but I know they're rare. Blooming heck. And there's a, a Renault... Megane. Megane. <laughs> not something you expect to see in a full race car. But it is indeed a Williams car. Okay, I can see the red room through the glass. I don't want to look too much now. Oh, that is nice. Right, let's just go in and have a look because th this is insane. Right, we've just entered the museum. We have a lovely little Austin 7. Another Austin 7. A friend of ours has got one of these in a barn, which we will do a Will It Run video on at some point. Another beautiful frog eye sprite. But over here, we have a car that I'd never heard of before. This is a, an Elvia. And it's a little race car. Um, it was built in 1959. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very cool little thing. I don't know a lot about it, but I will say this. It is very cool. Side pipes down there. All your dash and everything. Very cool. Very cool. Right. We're going to walk through there and see what we can see. Okay, second door through. Okay. This is very cool. This is an Albion news van. That is so cool. So the red room, which is insane, is to my left. And I don't want to look yet because I want to film a reaction to it because it's pretty incredible. Oh, that is such a nice old Albion. Very cool. We've got some really early stuff here. Now, what is that? This is very cool. Ooh. Look at all the brass and chrome on these. These are beautiful. Well, they're just the brass work more than anything else. Chrome wasn't really around at this time. That is very cool. It's got a monstrous engine over there, but we're not going to go there just yet. Oh, wow. <gasps> Ooh. That is a 1922 Rover. 
that is a really really early rover so i know about this car these are so cool they've got a boxer engine a two-cylinder a two-cylinder um not a boxer engine sorry it's very much like a, a two cv two cylinders air cooled how cool is that <laughs> literally cool air cooled if I was to buy a veteran rover, like a really old rover, it'd probably be this. Two cylinders, air-cooled, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Lovely little machine. Oh, I like that a lot. We're going to go this way first because, as I said, the red room is something quite insane. And I want to um, save it. Oh, you... Okay, so you can't go through here. You have to go to the red, through the red room first which is what we're going to do in a second. I want us to take a look at this giant engine thing. I'm literally, look, look, no joke, look, look at me. I'm covering my eyes so I don't see the red room because I want to save my reaction. What the hell is this? That's a monstrous engine, whatever this is. 2001 Manchester Special. <laughs> it's got a Merlin engine in it. That's got a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. That is so cool. There were quite a few. Oh my god, look at the size of that whopper. Oh, that is beautiful. I've always had a dream to put a Rolls-Royce Griffin engine in a car, which is a 58 litre. No, 37 and a and three quarter litre. So how are they fueling this? I'm curious to know. It appears to be some sort of injection. Wow. Because usually there's a on, <clears throat> on some of the other Merlins I've seen, there's a giant SU, like literally a single SU. It's huge on the top of it. Chain drive. Holy mackerel. Here's all your, all your gears look. It's currently in top gear. It's not a Jeremy Clarkson reference. Look at all the upholstery here. That is beautiful. Obviously, I'm not going to touch or sit on any of these cars. Lovely, lovely Manchester. Now, this is cool. This is Lanchester. This is the oldest car company in the world. And um, one of the oldest car companies in the world. I think it's the oldest British car company in the world. And this is the Lanchester of the Devil, because it's 666. <laughs> How ominous. Look at the size of these lamps. I've got fairly big hands. It's absolutely huge. Very similar to my friend Ian's Daimler. Huge, massive lights on it. 30 horsepower. So... A lot of, so this is interesting. You can see it says it's a straight eight in this. Wow, straight eight, and it's 95 horsepower. But why is it called 30 horsepower? Well, it's to do with tax classification. So if you had a lower horsepower classification, um, you wouldn't pay as much tax, even though this is nearly 100 horsepower. That's a big deal back in the day. Oh, it's a nice car. Huge, like 22 feet long or something. It's massive. Oh, absolutely spectacular. Okay, I can't wait any longer. Let's go look at the red room. Okay, so before I turn around, this is a Rolls-Royce Phantom 2. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so when I filmed the Bristol cars at a bit of Explorer, I'm pretty sure this is the same um, car that they had in bits. V12 in it, absolutely spectacular. Anyway, look at this. How crazy is this? Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Lancias, MGs, Alfa Romeos. Oh my god, Porsches, this is insane. MG Midget. This is the ones the pilots used to take uh, back after the war. Yeah. Oh no, this is the same as we saw in the car park. This is a TC. Yeah, this is, these are the ones they used to take back after the war, the pilots, the TFs. Let's look at this uh, beautiful Alfa here. Just look at the craftsmanship on that engine. Lovely little straight six. That's a tiny engine for a straight six. That's very short. It must be a, a small capacity. Look how cool the horn is on that. And the seats and the windscreen. Yeah. Let's go. This is this this is insane. I I, I regret nothing. <laughs> Coming here was amazing. Do you think this might trump? This might. 1.5 litre? 1.75. 1.75, straight six, bloody hell. I think this is trumping Gaiden, to be fair, so far. This is pretty insane. This okay. Is this is mad. Alfa Romeo, Giulietta Sprint GT. 
spider. These are good. We had one of these in college. Still oh, going around, oh that is beautiful. Spider. A 68 spider. Bloody hell. This is a Maserati Marac. Possibly one of the prettiest supercars ever made. And Jeremy Clarkson ruined one. <laughs> Let's have a look. We're allowed to go up here. Let's have a look at the... Oh, just look at the flying buttresses on the back. And the curvature and the shape of the glass on the windows. Wow. Another beautiful... A 63 Spider. So this was the same year the P6 came out. 2600. Wow. This is really rare. This is Lancia Fulvia Cabriolet. Convertible. This little three wheelers, interesting. What is this? Oh, it's a Morgan. Oh my god, this is a really early Morgan. This is one of the original Morgan three wheelers. Wow. That is nice. That is really nice. It'd be cool if they did exact replicas of these instead of the newer ones. Mustang. I believe it's a 289 in these. Oh no. This is the 4.7. This is the big one. Wow. Corvette. Oh wow, a Viper. But that's the RT10 version, which is the proper tuned up one. Eight litre. Eight litre. Mad. Wow. Ooh, Firebird Trans Am 455. Now, famously used in Smoking the Bandit, of course. Obviously, that was the Super Chicken version. These were actually quite underpowered because of the fuel regulations at the time, but. Uh, Actually, if you put some good bits on them, they make a lot of power. MGA. Love MGAs. They're beautiful. Triumph TR4. Triumph 57. Okay, these two cars here are insane. Marcos. Two Marcoses, I believe. Is that two? No, that's a Marcos, and that's a Sinetta, I think. Morgan, again, not my thing. Ooh, and there's another Sunbeam Tiger. We saw one of them in the car park. Ooh, 1959 Turner. Never heard of a Turner before. Catrum Super 7. <gasps> I did not see the Porsche. 356. Big Healy. MGC. You can tell because of the bulge in the bonnet. Bond. Did you see the Countach? Um, I have now. Holy smokes, that is beautiful. God damn. That's a... Holy man. I've never seen one in person. Until now. Yes, it is. Look at this Alvis drophead coupe. Isn't that beautiful? It's weird to think that despite the video being a bit disappointing, we've seen the biggest collection probably on earth of them. Yeah. That was an experience. And he passed out at the barn door. Yeah. Holy. Adela Hay? Oh my god, a drophead coupe, Delahaye? Jesus. These are silly rare. Silly rare. Pfft. I can't remember who, it was a famous celebrity who had a custom Delahaye made. Lucas will tell you. <sighs> Bloomin' heck. This is nice. That is very nice. Of course, it's a Fassel Vega. Big V8. I'm pretty sure this is a 6.2 litre Mopar, the same as in the Jensen Interceptor. Beautiful cars. I prefer these to the Jensen's. God, just look at the roof lines on it. It's got the best rear lights I've ever seen on a car. These little fins. I film one at NEC, but... Oh, if I had 200 grand, I'd definitely buy one of these. That's nice. 
That's a very nice car. Wow. I'm not pretending to know what all of these are, by the way. Oh, Lagonda. Lovely. Yeah, I'm not pretending to know what all of these are. That's obviously a Rolls Royce. Because I'm not, you know, a car genius. It's a coupe. Wow. Bentley Series 2 Continental Drop Egg Coupe. God, look at the size of this car. A two door. A two door. And it's absolutely gigantic. I will in a moment. Look at this. Let's see the size of this thing. Look at the size of this Bentley. It's a two door. Coupe. What did you say? The size of the tyres on it. Holy. That's gigantic. What's the size on this? It's going to be huge. Three, four, fives. Three, four, fives. Didn't they made them that big? Jesus. That is gigantic. Oh, look at Gordon Keemball. They're rare. V8, of course. Chevy. They're very rare, these. We did miss two cars. It, yeah. Did you see the Jaguar? No. The Lambo took charge. It's an XKSS. It's a replica, but a very good replica. The real ones, there's like ten of them or something. They're stupid rare. Because it didn't survive. All the blueprints were destroyed. And Jaguar made new ones, replicas, to the exact specs. Like ten years ago? And they were like four million pounds. Beautiful car. So the exhaust comes out here. Look. How cool is that? Oh, stunning. This is an AC Ace. This is what the Cobra was based on. So this is it in its original form before it became the Cobra. Some of these actually had the Bristol engine. And some of them had Ace's own engine. It depends on specification etc now I did miss this car I did see it but I was sort of taken aback by the um Kuntash. yeah this is a <laughs> ah, hmm this is an AC um my favorite AC 6.2 liter V8 141 miles an hour in 1972. I mean, the Jaguar E-Type was faster, but that's still really impressive. Seven litre V8 in these. <sighs> Let's go to the next room, next hall. This is just crazy. I'm stupid. I missed a row of cars. Don't ask me how, but I managed to do it. So, <laughs> two beautiful Triumph TRs. Stunning. A lovely Alvis. Ooh, now that is nice. It's a proper gentleman's race car, racing street car. Three big SUs. Oh, that's nice. So this is amazing. This is a Daimler 250. Edward Turner's engine. Absolute masterpiece. Beautiful little Hemi. They're really strong, actually. I don't know what this is. Sorry, comment down below if you know what it is. I do not. Hmm. Ooh, I love cars like this. I love these big giant pipes. That's so cool. A little Riley racer. Excellent. Right, there's loads more stuff that way. So let's head over there now. We're going to take a moment to show you this beautiful Citroen SM. I know this is classic Britain, but... What a stunning car. This is a vehicle I'd only buy if it was fully restored. Because they are... A living nightmare if they go wrong. I believe the throttle linkage goes from a rod to a cable, then to a rod and another cable or something. It goes through the inlet manifold or something. It's ridiculously complicated. But it has got a Maserati V6 in it. And the styling's beautiful. It's like if a DS was in the movie Tron. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. That's very nice. Lovely little male bike with the correct male carrying sidecar. Ooh, Heinkel bubble car. Lovely. 
Heinkel, of course, Heinkel Trojan, they eventually merge together to form one conglomerate. Prefer these to the Izetta, I must admit. Let's have a look. Ooh, Ford Pop. Okay. I was not expecting this. Okay. So we have a lovely standard 10. A lovely, lovely Vanguard. Lovely Anglia. And another Anglia. And a Consul. And a Cortina. Triumph of the Test, which is basically a Herald with a straight six in it. Dolomite Sprint. Very nice. I've had one of those. Albeit it was buggered. Ooh, another stag. Oh my god, look at the giant rover badge on the wall. I need it. I believe there was one of those on Marketplace a while ago. Oh, lovely Triumph 2 standard. 2000. Oh, perfect Triumph build quality. With a drip tray under it. I'm just kidding, all these cars have drip trays under them. Oh, now that is a stunning car. P4 Cyclops. Beautiful. Ford Capri. 2 litre. Lovely PA Cresta here. A lovely little van. Ooh, a nice truck. Rover 2000. Very clean 2000 Series 1. What year is it? It's a D Reg. It's a 66. Still a single carb. Very nice. There's a Van den Pla Princess next to it. Got a Vauxhall. Hillman Minx. Ooh, now that is very nice. A Talbot. Lovely. Rustin. The size uh, difference between the A35 and the 40 is very noticeable here. <laughs> no, that's for you, Sarah. Another M Metropolitan. A little singer. Humber, Humber. Humber Spectre Mark III. Very nice. These are very rare. Austin Atlantics. Quite a quirky looking car. Ooh, now that is beautiful. A nice Riley. 48 Riley. Lovely. An Allegro. That's for you, Alex. Ooh, now these are really rare. I've got a friend who collects the police car versions of these. Very scarce. And of course, we have another Humber. Very nice. Now here's a very cool little cutaway car. It's 37 Super Snipe. All your gearbox and everything going around. Very cool. Shows a differential working. We'll go around the other side. Oh, there's all your pistons going up and down. Very cool. I will also say there's some nice automobilia in here. Oh, wow. So, I don't know if this is a repro or an original, but these are really rare. Especially in nice condition. They tend to get cracked and chipped over the years. MG. Beautiful. My neighbor's got an old MG. <sighs> Lovely 1917 Morris MG. A couple MGs. Very early Moggy Miner with a cheese grater grill and a split screen. Oh, it's convertible too. Wolseley. Morris Oxford 6 Saloon. Very nice. A lovely Morris 8 Saloon. And we have a lovely little MG Racer, which is very cool. Is it supercharged? It looks like it might be. There's an SU there. Wow, 120 horsepower. Crikey. I think it might be supercharged. That would explain why there'd be an SU there. Hmm. Let's see what we've got in here. Your favourite? Isn't that your favourite Ferrari? One of them, yeah. <gasps> That's a GT40. Okay, let's calm down. Um, oh my god. Look at this thing. This I know. Crazy. Okay, so we'll start over here. What is this? A 406? Don't know. Sorry. It, oh no, it's not 406. It's a 456, sorry. Look, I always found Ferraris have nicer interiors than Lamborghinis. So funnily enough, uh, these Ferrari 400s were literally worthless for years. And there's a guy who's got a really good... All Ferrari part, um, 250 GTO replica, and it's a chassis of a 400. But now you wouldn't do it, obviously. Unless you find a really bad one in a barn somehow. 250 GT Cabriolet. 
which is beautiful. This is Rob's favourite Ferrari. These are the affordable Ferraris. You can get one of these for about £40,000. Or would you rather have this or a Golf? It's going to be the Ferrari. Oh. Sweet Jesus, I was not expecting that. Okay, this trumps Gaydon, I'm sorry. Gaydon's a really good museum, but this is insane. Holy crap. A GT40. It's a Dax replica, but it's still very cool. Wow. Yeah, indeed. 500 to Sierra Cosworth. One of these sold for over half a million, not that long ago. Promotional car, wow. Look at all the, the cutout, how cool is that? Okay, that is a real Mexico. Turn around. Yeah. We'll look at that in a minute. I believe, I can't remember what this is called. Oh, it's like. Okay. Yes. Formula Ford. <gasps> Look, there's a Cosworth DFV back there. Oh, wow. <gasps> hey, Rob, look. Don't say anything, but look what's on the side of that F1 car. <laughs> John Haynes TR, TVR Tuscan race car. Porsche race car. Ferrari 360 race car. Oh. Okay, that's a Lola T370, and I didn't know what that was, I wasn't just reading it, with the Cosworth DFE, and the biggest fat tyres you've ever seen in your life. I will zoom on that. Look at the size of those meats on the back. That is monstrous. Oh, the 70s were just the best era for racing, honestly. 64 Lotus 11. Jaguar Cougar. This is what I was going mental over, a Jaguar D-Type. It is a replica, but it's a damn good one. Long nose D-Type replica. God, that's stunning. Oh, nice, that's very nice. Allard, these are nice. Flathead Ford V8 in this, by the way. Just so people know. We'll walk through to this. And I have already lost the power of speech about four times today. Oh, oh, oh. Holy yank tank. Wow. I... Um, uh, could you turn around again? Turn around. Uh, that's an AC Cobra. A real AC Cobra. Oh my god, look at the charger. Okay, freaking out right now. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> look! It's an Edsel wagon. I have one of them. We won't talk about what it was like. 59 Cadillac. Yeah, I have one of these Edsel wagons. I'll, if you want to see that video, it'll be on Patreon. Not Patreon, um, channel memberships. Hundreds of hours of exclusive content over there. Cadillac. Ford, Lincoln, people don't realise how big the American cars were, oh this is awesome, Pontiac Superior, hearse ambulance combination, Lucas actually had one of these in America and he paid 800 bucks for it, and obviously now you, you wouldn't get one of the wheels for 800 bucks, but uh, so, so cool, and we're going to um, film this Stingray, which is absolutely beautiful, a 69 Corvette Stingray. We'll sort of loop our way around. Another Corvette. Oh my. A Charger. My friend had one of these before the Fast and Furious films came out and he sold it for 15,000 pounds. And um, the Fast and Furious came out, I think three days after he sold it and they skyrocketed overnight. Ford Fairlane. Retractable hardtop. This is a Nash. 
No, this is not. I'm stupid. It's a 55 Chevy. Bel Air, obviously. That's a Cadillac. This is my... Actually, I think this is my favourite Cadillac, actually. The 49 Fleetwood. Really like it. I know everyone likes the 59s and later ones, but I do love the 49. 49 Chevy. Oof. Chevrolet, Chevrolet Fleet, Line, Fleet Line. Buick. 40 Buick Coupe. Oh... But that is a Packard. Wow. Oldsmobile. L37. How amazing does that look? <gasps> oh my god, I didn't see the baby cord. Holy mackerel. I did not see that. Oh, the baby cord is beautiful. They did a few of these which are actually supercharged. Very rare. <laughs> Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a Duesenberg. That is a Duesenberg. And Duesenberg brothers, brothers were years ahead of their time. They had the most powerful and fastest cars in the world for years. But the cars cost so much money to make. They eventually went bankrupt because of the Depression. There's very, very few of them around. Oh my. Oh my. That is a supercharged Auburn. Oh, please have the big drain pipes. <gasps> it does. Oh, my God. Look at the pipes on this thing. Huge. Oh. Wow. These are multi-million pound cars. That is beautiful. Got some early veteran stuff here. Not really my cup of tea, but still very cool. We'll go around... Have you seen the motorbikes? This will be this will be Rob's time to shine. What's that? Stanley's Steam Car. It's a steam car. This is a Stanley Steamer. Yeah. I've never seen one that looks like this before. Twenty one. That's quite late, actually. Yeah. Ford Mustang. Another beautiful car here. Ford Thunderbird. Ooh, a '67 Camaro. SS, very desirable car. Also convertible, even more desirable. <sighs> Corvette. My mother would be having an absolute mental breakdown right now. Yeah, they're saying that we need to hurry up and get filming. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Okay. This is crazy, but here's my number. Holy crap. Oof. Okay, we're going to come back to this bit, because that's the end of the museum is that way. So we're going to go over here, and there's a ton of F1 cars. So we're going to, get, we're going to go check those out. Okay, it's time for F1 cars. Oh, 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 oh. holy Jesus. Okay, I don't really care about that modern stuff. But that, these are what I'm interested in. 1995 screaming three litre V10s. 800 horsepower. These were some of the most crazy F1 cars ever built. This tire is like two foot wide. I mean, granted, it's not as extreme as the Lotus, but it's pretty cool. That reminds me, I must get a photo of the Lotus before we leave. Oh my god. And there's more. More F1 cars. This way. Or an F1 cinema or something. We'll see what's going on over here. Oh no, it's just a, it's just a film. Right. Let's go upstairs and look at some motorcycles. This is where Rob comes into his own, because I know nothing about bikes. You'll be better than me, that's for sure. Let's go have a look. Let's race the lift. <laughs> Who needs electricity? Suckers. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. These are all British bikes. Triumph. Triumph. Oh, wow. This is really rare. 
Now, those of you who charge us are going to laugh because this is a Wankel motorcycle. It's a rotary engine motorcycle. How cool is that? Norton 850 Commando. My mate, my mate's got a couple of them. CZ125. 175. I don't know, 125. Bantam. Velocet. Oh, look. Honda, Honda CB72. I only bought a CB92. You had a CB, what was it, recently? 250? Uh, CB200. CB200. 1977. Another Norton. Beautiful Norton. 350. Triumph. Triumph. BSA. Gold Star. My mother had one of these. She actually had the Thunderbolt A65, but she was only five foot two, so it was too big for her. <laughs> but she still rode it anyway. Triumph Trophy, very nice. Matchless. 39 AJS, very nice. Supreme, Supreme. Excelsior. Lucas has got a little Excelsior in his shed. He's had it since he was 13. AJS, 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 BSA. Lovely. Right, let's go look at the. Uh... Oh my god. <sighs> That's a Bruff Superior. Mm -hmm. Possibly the most valuable motorcycle on the planet. I was about to say, I think it's SS80, but it is SS80. This is 100 to more valuable. Mm. Wow. Your Lawrence of Arabia was killed on one of these, I believe. 126 miles an hour, he came off and killed himself on one of these. Not this model, but it was indeed a breath superior. I see we've got this original sidecar. How cool is that? New Hudson. Oh, that's very cool. 2007. How the hell do you pronounce that? Ural. Oh, it's basically a Ural motorcycle. That's very cool. All right, you ready to see the final room? Yes, let's go. We're here in motorbike heaven. And Rob's going to give us a tour. And here is a Bruff Superior SS80 and sidecar. Possibly the most... No, they are the most valuable British motorcycle on the planet. The SS100 is more valuable again, but you are correct. This is still probably £100,000 quite easily. I think it's more than that. A couple I'm hundred sure. thousand? Who knows? Lawrence of Arabia was famously killed on one of these. I think he was going 128 or something. Yeah, or oh, SS100. It was an SS100, here's one. It's got the original sidecar, look at that. Rough Superior sidecar. Got Triumph. Triumph? Well, that's cool. A DKW. It's a rotary engine. A Wankel engine. Hopefully YouTube doesn't censor that. <laughs> I bet it does. <laughs> because Donut Media did a video recently of uh, the RX-7, mm. and they didn't use that word. Who knows? Anyway. My friend does Nortons, he's got a couple of these uh, commandos. They're surprisingly quick for what they are. So the 850 commando, I believe, is the last... Um... I got it wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say it's one of the last ones they made, but I think there was a break in, in Norton's history. Yeah, uh, possibly. Around that era. Mm. Yeah, it's possible. Another CZ, I had a 125 CZ. Yes, they banned them. They're very popular with mail. Mobilette. The D fourteen four was the last uh, band that they made. The D sevens are the most common. The D tens are quite rare. Mm. You can always tell a Mobilette, can't you? Just because how weird they look. Of course. Here we have a Honda CB seventy two. You had a Honda CB, didn't you? Two hundred. CB two hundred. Yeah, nineteen seventy seven. The green. The distinctive and common green tank with rubber on the top. 350 Norton. Very nice. Triumph. T21. You know our friend's place, he's got quite a few British bikes in the, in the shed, hasn't he? Yeah. 64 Triumph T20. Oh, AJS 500. Fun fact, my friend's got one of these bikes. Does he? And uh, we were trying to kickstart it, and he cocked it up and um, hurt his leg. Did it backfire? Yes. Back kicks it, yeah. 500 BSA Gold Star. My mother had a 650 Thunderbolt, A65, but she's only five foot two, so she was, it was too big for her. She actually imported it from Canada when and she my, moved here. My dad had one of these when he was a kid. Mm. 
And she, when she got pregnant with me, I ruined her life and she sold it. But um, 500cc Vincent Comet, very nice bike. Triumph Trophy, big racing popularity with these. Matchless is a nice bike. Our friend Jack has got a Matchless. 250, AJS. Scout, 600. Nice, 38 Scout, 600. Single. I bet you that is brutal to ride. A 1930s 500, 600cc single. This is a 350 Excelsior. Um, Lucas actually has the 98cc one. It was his first vehicle. He bought it when he was 13, and he's still got it in a shed. Some lovely AJSs here. And a BSA and a Francis Barnett. Excellent. The oldest one here is this 1914 BSA. BSA. Wow. Do you know what BSA stands for? British Small Arms. It's Birmingham Small Arms. Birmingham Small Arms, but yeah, close enough. <laughs> but um, it was that design on this particular bike. I'll oh, point the camera at this bike for me. This design of the fuel tank being underneath was commonplace. Well, it was the only way it was done in this era. And you can see, look, all these bikes. And even if you go across to the New Hudson in the middle here, that's also got the tank. There. Yeah, there's the bar. And this company, Brust Superior. Brust Superior, they were the first company to have a tank over the top of the frame. Really? Yes. Oh, wow, okay. And that innovation has stayed to this day. Wow. That's belt driven. You see that? Yeah. It's like loads of little links stapled together. God, that seat looks about as comfortable as sandpaper underwear. <laughs> yeah. We did miss one little bike over here, which I didn't spot. Which is... Oh, that's a racing bantam. That is very cool. Are right, you ready? The, D1s, ready? the D1's first iteration of the bantam. So that's why they're rare? The racing bantams are very rare. Mm. D1, I think there's still quite a few of them. Yeah. Um, but I believe that a lot of the D1s did not have any rear suspension apart from the springs on the seat. Mm. So I'm not entirely sure how original this particular. Yeah, it's obviously chopped is. about for racing. Of course, yeah. But uh, you ready to see the final haul? Yes, let's go. Right, we're fighting a race against my battery, so we've got to be quick. E-Type V12, Jaguar 420G, Jaguar XKR, another E-Type 4.2, beautiful car. We have a Jaguar Mark II, the Mark IX. And an early Jaguar down here. A 3.5 litre, 1949. Beautiful. Now, that is indeed a Jaguar XJ220. But unlike the one at Gaydon, you'll see this one has the V6 in it with the twin turbos. It's a shame they didn't do the V12, otherwise it would have sold way better. But it's still a beautiful car. We'll just show you the comparison. You can see that, indeed, it's not the, the mighty V12, but still very cool. Lotus Elan, our good friend Jeff, who sadly passed away, had one of these. The Lotus Elite, possibly the worst Lotus ever built. Got another Lotus back there. A Turbo Esprit. A couple other Lotuses. Ooh, a Europa over here. Very nice. Here's the predecessor to the Jensen Interceptor, the CV8. Very strange looking car. And the actual Interceptor. Lovely Aston Martin. Beautiful. That's a DB4 Series 2. Ooh, DBS, very nice. My friend had one of these. Lagonda, possibly the ugliest car Aston Martin ever made. We have two Jaguars, XK150 and 120. I didn't know there was a, another Rover SD1 estate. <laughs> As I said at the last museum at Gaydon, it's such a shame that um, Rover never made these because they would have destroyed BMW and all British V8 estate car. It would have wiped the floor with them. But sadly, they didn't make it. it. Even says on the thing, missed opportunity for Rover. Not going to film the DS. Not, not the, the um, 2CV. DS is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful. My neighbor had a Safari one of these, the estate. And he's actually got one of these currently. Lovely big Gaz. These are, the, so these are Russia's copies of old American cars. But they're actually better because they were designed to run in like minus 30. <laughs> these are bomb proof. Not literally. It's a lovely Tatra. These are amazing cars. These are built for Russian dignitaries. 
stunning interior, lovely wood wheel, manual, and of course, being a Tatra, rear engine. There's a guy who's got one of these on YouTube and it's well tuned up, it's really fast. It was like 0 to 16, like seven seconds or something. It's really quick. This is the SV1. Birkeland SV1, electric car. DAF 44, we know what those are like. Series 2 Land Rover. Got a few other little cars here. TR8, TR6. Hillman Imp. Honda. Oh wow, look, this is the original. It's one of a Fiat 500 style. The 600 isn't as valuable as the 500. There's a Trojan, my neighbour had one of these. Ooh, that's a Mischief Smith. Is it a freewheeler? A freewheeler. The four wheelers are stupid rare. Even in museums, you don't see them. <gasps> wow. 950 SL. Oh, wow, wow, wow. These are cool. These are very unusual. A lovely little Di Tommaso Pantera. Oh, my God. This was um, my late friend's favourite, one of his favourite cars, his dream cars was this. Got to pay some respect and uh, show the inside of this car in case he's watching this from heaven or wherever. Beautiful car, this. Right, and there's a Trabant. We're going to rush over here because the camera battery is at like 5% and I really don't want to miss anything so we are rushing now i'm sorry if i've missed anything cool very cool toyota mr2 don't have time don't have time don't have time oh nice a mini room riley riley elf these aren't worth nearly as much as the minis are which is weird because they're basically the same car just different from lovely mini early mini with a crinkly grill there's a mini Saw the moak thing up there. Yeah, 64 mini moak. And this is one that's been cut in half, obviously. <laughs> oh dear. Right. That is about everything, I think. Yeah. That is the Haynes Motor Museum. It was absolutely fantastic. If you're ever here, I really do recommend it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to love and despise, like and subscribe, comment down below, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out our exclusive content or channel memberships. And until next time, Bye for now.